Hi everyone, so in this video I'll be unboxing and just taking a quick look at the LaVolta 30 volt 5 amp power supply. I don't really know that much about power supplies, but I know that people find these videos useful. Before I bought this video, I watched a couple of YouTube videos on it, so I appreciate when people do these videos and I just figured, hey, hopefully you guys will benefit from this video. So what I'll do is I'll unbox it and then I'll open up the power supply, like literally have a look at the internals. Just because I know one guy did that on YouTube, but it wasn't very clear and I wanted to get a better look at it anyway. So open up, uh, unbox it, open it up, and then we'll do some basic tests on a breadboard just to see how it operates with a multimeter as well. And then we'll take a look at some of the Amazon reviews because one guy left a really good review, which I think is worthwhile taking a look at. So yeah, let's just quickly unbox this. So you got these clips, UK power supply, so it's actually quite small, I mean here's a multimeter for comparison, but the thing is solid man, it's like proper heavy stuff man so i actually really like it i think it looks a lot better than my Eventech one which i got from the um from amazon for actually more money as well this looks a lot more modern and just it just looks a lot better i like it a lot it does if you're the right what i really like is on my last pass by the Eventech one that i've got you have to like actually unscrew these and then clip like uh, clamp it sorry into there but these ones are so much better you just push it straight in that is just i'm very happy with that look at that that's so, that's just a much better way of doing things because i actually want to change the leads a lot and i have to like unscrew them it's just yeah it's annoying that's so much nicer the handle carry case a uh, bit feels very very solid it's actually, I'm actually surprised by how heavy this thing is. These, I'm not a fan of these. Just make sure you don't touch this. I had this same little slider switch on my Ender 3 3D printer. And just be careful with this. So if you're in the UK or, you know, if you're in Europe, Australia, or I don't know, those kind of places where we use 220 volts, then make sure that you have the 220 volts showing. And then if you're in the US, Canada, etc., then make sure you have 110 volts showing i get why they do it so that they can sell it obviously internationally everywhere but this is a bit uh yeah it's a bit scary yeah bad stuff can happen if you switch that so make sure if you're in the uk you know australia europe leave it at 220 volts just about the case so this front panel here is just plastic it's actually fairly decent quality plastic as well it's not like super cheap stuff and then this metal is good quality oh. And the back plate again, metal as well. Let's have a look at the bottom. Yeah, metal. I like it. So it's obviously super easy to open. It's literally just a bunch of screws. So let's unscrew it all and open it up. I love it. So it's super easy to open up. There was what, two, four, six, eight screws. So two on each side of this side. So these two bottom ones, one on each side here, this side and the other side. And then these two top ones here. And that's it. You then literally just lift it up. And here we go. So I don't really know what I'm looking at. Uh, obviously I know this is a transformer. Some big giant capacitors. You know. Fan. Which I suppose is nice because if your fan breaks. Look how easy it is to replace that fan. But yeah I just figured that. Some of the, the other YouTube videos. They didn't really show that much in detail. I think just because camera angles. And it was an old video. So. I don't know if this will be useful to you guys. I don't know what I'm looking at here. <laughs> Let's turn it around. This is actually different to the YouTube video that I saw. Yeah, so it's actually different. It must be a different design or something. So 
So I bought this February 2021. Personally, I mean, just looking at it, it looks fairly high quality to me. It doesn't look like there's any like cheap components used. But again, what do I know? Okay, all right, let's put it back together and then test it. All right, so it's plugged in now. Before I turn it on, I've learned this with my old pass by you need to make sure you turn all the knobs to the left because, you know, especially if you're messing with the knobs like my kids do, then you crank it up to the highest voltage and when you turn it on, it tries to go, especially if you've got a load attached to it already, it tries to go straight to that 30 volts or whatever. So yeah, make sure you uh, turn these down. All right, let's turn this on. Oh, nice. That is one solid button. Listen to that. That is a proper nice solid button there. Okay, we've got like some sort of stop button here. Okay, so got a breadboard. And I've got a 100 ohm, 2 watt rated resistor here. We'll try and see how much current we can get from it. I'll be surprised if we get 20 milliamps. The thing with this is you can't really test current. Some of the other videos, there were a lot of people complaining, bless the guy, uh, about how he only tested voltage. It's quite difficult to test current uh, for many different reasons, really. But, all right. Especially if you want, like this says it can output... So the last power supply I bought said it can output 10 amps. And I realized when I bought that, I was excited. I was like, oh yeah, 10 amps, that's a lot. But I hope I'm not working on anything that requires 10 amps in my bloody bedroom. All right, so let's stick this resistor in. 100 ohm rated and then a, a two watts. So let's stick our ground in. And positive. So I'm just gonna see how much current I can get from this thing. So I'm expecting if I go up to like, okay, wow, straight to 12 volts, buddy. Okay, let's turn it down a bit. Interesting, so as I'm turning it, there's like a ticking sound. So once it goes over six volts, or over seven volts, there's a tick. I assume there's some sort of switch in there that over seven volts, oh, okay, wow. So this dial is quite rapid. I turn it a little bit and it flies up. So we got um, so the resolution on the the voltage is 0 0.01, and the resolution on the current is 0 0.01. No, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 on the current and 0 0.01 on the voltage. That's the resolution. All right. So let's put our current. I mean, does it really matter how much you adjust the current? Or it's only, is, is it only really off and on? It really isn't it? Like, I'm not gonna be able to get more current out of this six volts. Okay, so I've got those both set to max anyways. Um, let's crank our voltage up. My resistor's gonna get hot now. So 10 volts. So there we've got 0 0.1 or 100 milliamps of current. I think I said in the beginning that we'd, we wouldn't be able to get 20 milliamps. I meant 200 milliamps. So we've got, yeah, it's heating up already. Okay, let's go to 12 volts, 12.5. Okay, we're at 15. Okay, so Apparently we're at 15.1. Let me take it to 15.2. There you go. Okay. Let's test it now with the multimeter. So it, it went to 15.3. I don't know why. I didn't see when it went to 15.3. Okay. 15.2. 15.18. I think my multimeter here is the problem. 15.18, 15.2. Again, I don't know if it's the multimeter or the... Um, but this multimeter is quite accurate, but I don't know. Okay, let's go to 15.4. I'm reading 15.3 here. Okay. If the negative sign is confusing you, it's just because I had the pins the other way around. 
Yeah, so I'm getting 15.3 here, 15.4 here. I don't know what's more accurate. Okay, let's see if we can get to 200 milliamps without my resistor burning on fire. Now I'm scared to touch it with this part of my finger because <laughs> it sticks. Yeah, you can just feel it. Okay, you ready for a firework show? So we're at 20 volts. This is gonna burn. What happens if I press this button? My resistor is gonna burn out soon. Nice. So that's like, you can, there's a physical switch in there. You can hear it. That's cool. So this controls a mechanical switch. All right, my resistor is gonna burn and I'm gonna probably set off the fire alarm. That's okay. I haven't actually seen these large resistors burn yet. You can see it's going, it's gone red. Look at that. And we're getting some smoke. So 250 milliamps of current. Should we just take it to 30? Oh, I'm breathing these fumes in for you guys. Okay. We got bubbles. So it wouldn't actually go to 30, it went to 20. Almost 300 milliamps of current. I'm surprised it got that much. Uh, this is one big resistor. All right, I've had enough. I don't find it breathing this in. <coughs> one second. I've got the window open now, so I apologize if you can hear any wind noise, but. That resistor is toast. You've done very well though to not go up in flames. I find this button very, very useful. My other power supply doesn't have that. The fact that you can just disconnect it, you know, without you know, turning it off, is clever. Okay, so let's just talk about fan noise because, I mean, even with no load, you know, no voltage, no current, it is still quite loud, the fan. And this is obviously at the side, or at the back. It's actually blowing out cool air, like a lot of cool air actually. I'm amazed I can feel I can feel the, the fan very strongly. It's actually quite a powerful fan. But yeah, you can hear it, it's quite loud. Do you know what though? I do want to just comment on the, the power supply. I feel a lot safer using this power supply than I do my Eventech one. My Eventech one, using it, I just, I get the feeling that it's cheap. You know, the weight of this one makes me feel like, you know, it's good quality. At the same time, you know, the Eventech one's quite tall. So I've actually knocked it down a few times, which obviously if I have a circuit connected up, you know, knocking it down whilst I'm trying to grab some tools above it is a big problem. This, you're not knocking this down anywhere. So, considering that this is actually cheaper than the Eventech one that I that I got, you know, I much much prefer this. This one's amazing, to be honest. I really really like it, and I feel very safe knowing that you like you're talking about a big heavy power switch there. Look at how much noise that fan makes. And then on top of that, you're talking about like actual switches there. So let me just turn it back on and press this again so you can hear it. So listen out, when I press this, you're gonna hear like an actual click. Let's try to get on the side here. So when I press it, then I literally like, you know, within a half a second, or a third of a second, you get another click internally. So the click of the button and then you get another click internally, listen. But what's amazing is that, so, when you're pushing it in, it disconnects. You can hear the click instantly at the same time as this. So you can barely hear it. But then when you when you release it, the button's released first and then you hear the click on the inside. I like that. It's nice. Yeah, this is a good little pass by. All right, let's just quickly jump on Amazon and take a look at the reviews there. But for me, I'm very happy with this. This is, you know, just over £50 I paid for it. Very, very happy. I like it. I actually like it a lot. So many different reasons why I prefer it over the Eventech one, including these little clips as well. This is brilliant. 
Like I can actually look, I can actually disconnect straight away like that instead of, you know, on the other one I have, I have to actually unscrew this and remove the clamp, you know, which I've actually had before. I was showing the kids around some um, burning up resistors with them and I actually like pretty much molded the resistor into that and I couldn't separate the resistor from the clip. And I wanted to disconnect the power supply and I actually had to unscrew it like this and pull it out, which is just silly. So yeah, um, this is so much better as well. Yeah, very happy with this. Okay, so we're over here on Amazon. As you can see, I got it for £59.79. I'm very happy for. So if you just have a look here at the, the five star rating, you can see 120 ratings, 4.3 out of five stars, 64% of them five star. So that's what you want to see. So what's that? About 77, 75. Yeah, 75 or so ratings, five stars out of 120. So that to me is more than good enough, you know. Now, the one thing that I do want to discuss is if we take a look here at this review. I found this review very interesting. Again, I don't know that much about power supplies or even what this guy's really going on about, but he seems like he's quite knowledgeable. Now, what's interesting is that this review was on July 2017. And a lot of the YouTube videos that are on this power supply are around that 2017, 2018 period. But here now, 2021, the power supply looks, you know, the internals here are, are actually a fair bit different. So it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like if you have a look like here, we in my board, I don't have this part standing upright like he does. And it just doesn't, it doesn't look the same. So I'm not sure how much has changed. I'm not sure if this is any different. It's the schematic apparently. Like here where he's got this switch up here. I think mine's like further down below. But I'm not sure. Let's just have a look at his review. So he calls it a Chinese Shenzhen special. Which I assume is a diss. Like, you know, bad thing. Very simple internal design. Low quality wiring construction on the inside. Easily hackable heatsink for power BJTs. Is uh, I don't know what he's put there. So it goes linear supplies, definitely a Chinese Shenzhen special. Very simple internal design and function. Low quality wiring construction on the inside. So heat sink for power BJTs is a bent aluminium sheet. That's I, I think that mine was the same. I think it's talking about uh let's have a look if we can find it. It's looking like this thing here. Doesn't look the same there, but like this, I think. It's put big. I don't know what he means by big, maybe it means BJT. It has a large silicon iron laminated transform running what looks to be two secondaries. I don't know what that means. Main display is two uh, ICL7107 voltage meters driving six total seven segment displays. This board is better construction than the main power board. So he's saying that the front board this is constructed better. Okay. Note the main power switch had some green death creeping in on it. I did see that in his pictures, but I didn't notice that in my supply. Show you what he's talking about there. He's talking about that there. Main power transistors are two N three O five fives. I said using sill pads. Main power board is discrete through hole parts. Just put two times two hundred fifty volt rated relays. Two electrolytic capacitors. Yeah. So I just found that interesting because if you know much about power supplies, maybe you could have benefited from his little teardown of it. For me though, just, you know, take note because I feel like they've obviously updated it. I mean, they definitely have updated it from this review. So I don't know if my version is better or maybe it's worse. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Thanks for watching guys. And uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next one.